First, President Biden is isolating in the White House after testing positive for COVID-19. The 79-year-old president is fully vaccinated and double boosted and is experiencing mild symptoms. The positive test is the first known time that he's contracted the virus. Mr. Biden seemed in good spirits on Twitter saying, quote, I'm doing great and keeping busy. Our Nancy Cordes is at the White House with the latest. Nancy. Well, your White House protocols helped to shield this president from contracting COVID for more than two years. But now he has joined the estimated 200 million Americans who have been infected by this virus. Hey, folks, guess you heard this morning I tested positive for COVID. Speaking from a White House balcony, a slightly congested President Biden said he's feeling well enough to keep working in isolation. Thanks for your concern and keep the faith. It's going to be OK. In a letter, White House doctor Kevin O'Connor said Mr. Biden tested positive for COVID during a routine screening this morning and has developed mild symptoms, including a runny nose, fatigue, and an occasional dry cough. The president was promptly prescribed a five-day course of Paxlovid, an antiviral drug that dramatically reduces the risk of severe COVID. Visiting schools in Detroit, the first lady immediately slipped on a mask. He's doing fine. He's feeling good. Uh, I tested negative this morning. Contact tracing has begun. The president spent time yesterday with three senators and the governor of Rhode Island. On Tuesday, he welcomed Ukraine's first lady to the White House. We always said that this was a possibility. Dr. Ashish Jha is the White House COVID coordinator and spoke to the president this morning. He hadn't even been able to finish his breakfast because he had just been busy. I encouraged him to finish his breakfast. The good news is his immune system is very well protected given the, the four vaccine shots he's gotten. Tests will confirm whether the 79-year-old president was infected by the highly contagious BA5 subvariant, which is now responsible responsible for nearly 80 percent of all U.S. cases. The number of daily cases has nearly tripled in the past three months, and hospitalizations are up 20 percent just in the past two weeks. Dr. Jha says President Biden does not have a fever and that his oxygen levels are normal. President Biden will continue to isolate and hold meetings by phone and by Zoom in the White House residence until he tests negative, and the White House will be staying at their home in Wilmington, Delaware. Lilia. Thank you, Nancy Cordes. The president, like me, was keeping that streak. For more, I am joined by Dr. Amish Adalja. He is an infectious disease expert and a senior scholar at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Uh, thank you for joining us, doctor. President Biden is experiencing mild symptoms from what Nancy was just reporting, dry cough, runny nose, and fatigue. But how concerning is this diagnosis, considering that he's 79 years old after all? Anytime somebody of that age gets COVID-19, you have to take it very seriously because there is a non-zero risk for severe disease. However, the fact that he's vaccinated, that he's boosted, that he was promptly tested and prescribed Paxlovid, all really argues that this is likely to be a mild case for him. And I think that's a good thing. And it's a testament to how far we've come in terms of science and medicine since when the last president was infected with COVID. Right, that's right. And what does it mean for people who've been in close contact with the president recently? I'm thinking world leaders. It means that those individuals who had significant exposures will have to monitor their symptoms, think about testing, and just really be alert that they could be somebody that contracted COVID-19. I think this is something that is now a fact of life during any kind of social interaction, whether you're an ordinary person or whether you're a world leader. COVID-19 is always going to be a threat. You know, I wanted to ask you about Paxlovid, the COVID drug that President Biden is currently taking. How does it work? And tell me about the side effects. I know that it's also been linked to this resurgence of COVID-19 infection after the first course of pills is finished, which has led to a lot of confusion among people who've taken the drug. I mean, did I get COVID again? Did it come back? Just walk us through what this drug does. So Paxlovid is an antiviral drug. It's called a protease inhibitor. It interferes with the virus's ability to process its proteins. And it's given orally for five days, twice a day. And it's highly effective at preventing severe disease, hospitalization, and death, even in unvaccinated individuals. So it is really a game-changing drug. Side effects may include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Uh, some people uh, also complain a lot about the taste. It does have a, a bad taste to it. 
And this rebound phenomenon is still something a bit of that's a bit of a mystery. We've heard at least anecdotally that some people get better, test negative, and then rebound back up with symptoms. That happened to Dr. Fauci. It's happened to a few other individuals. We don't know how common it is. We don't know how likely it is to be related to Paxlovid or something that's going on with the virus. But it's not, not a reason not to give Paxlovid. And we don't usually treat them again if they get that rebound. The people with rebound mm -hmm. usually do very well. So you kind of let the virus take its own course and, and go away after that first uh, initial treatment. We've mentioned the president is fully vaccinated and has received two boosters as well. Many people in the country are still hesitant to get the vaccine at all. Some are hesitant to get boosted. Some are waiting till the fall for this so-called you know, miracle new vaccine. Uh, tell us with this new rise in infections, how important is it to get your shots right now if you haven't or get your boosters? It's still very important for that proportion of the population. I think it's about two thirds that are eligible for vaccination to get vaccinated. That's the best way to minimize any impact COVID-19 is going to have on your life. Additionally, if you're somebody that's high risk, maybe you're older, maybe you have obesity or you're diabetic, getting boosted tops off that immunity and protects you from getting severe disease. I think the reason why people are breathing easy over President Biden's infection is the fact that he's vaccinated and boosted, and this becomes a much more manageable infection than it would be if it were not for the power of the vaccines. So the vaccine is still the key part of our control measure to make this a much easier disease to deal with, to remove any threat to hospital capacity. So the more people that are vaccinated, the more people that are up to date, especially if they're high risk, the easier it is for us to deal with COVID-19. Very important, these vaccines, and not just the COVID one. We've been talking about other vaccines this week, too. Dr. Amish Adalja, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thank you.